This is Resident 24.4 FM, flipping marvellous. How you doing? It's Nick Hennigan with you once more on Literary London and, uh, of course, on bohemianbritain.com. Um, and we're going to get festive this time. Yeah, I'm not sure when you're listening to this. And, of course, the glory of podcasts and catch-up is that you can listen to it at any time. But, no, it's the first week of December in the year of our Lord, 2022. So, uh, well, that was a bit loud, wasn't it? So I thought, yeah, I thought we'd get a bit festive, sort of get in the in the mood, you know, like most commercial people do. Mind you, they tend to start in the middle of October, don't they? Yeah, well, well, well. so we're, we're justified. Um, and I'm also particularly Christmassy because my uh, production of A Christmas Carol is touring the United Kingdom at the moment. Um, it's, uh, I adapted, and I adapted the classic, Charles Dickens' classic. I also directed it, and it's a one-person performance of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. The first time I did it was actually as a reading at the beautiful Fitzrovia Chapel in Fitzrovia uh, in London, W1. Um, with Guy Masterson, who I've known through... Actually, I first met Guy when we did the Dylan Thomas Centenary a few years ago, organised by Griff Reese jones That was where I first bumped into <coughs> Guy. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. I need to turn that off, don't I, really? Uh, it's NASA. NASA's live now. Uh, yeah, NASA are always in touch. Do you know what they're like, that NASA? Cool. Blimey, now leave me alone, NASA. Um, yeah, so Guy Masterson came along and uh, he was rather good. Uh, and we decided to make a complete show of it. And so it is now a complete show. Uh, in fact, I say it's been a complete show for a few years. It's toured the USA, and I think it's going to go to the USA next Christmas as well. Um, and in fact, if you want to know any more, it's I think the website is thechristmascarol.co.uk. If you want to know, uh, if you're in the UK, you want to know where it's touring, have a look. www.thechristmascarol.co.uk. Um and I'll check that I've got that right. So my background with the Christmas Carol goes back a long time because I was at school. Yes, I was. Yeah, I went to school. I know. It's hard to believe. But I did. I went to school in Birmingham. And, uh, yeah, quite a few of us did. Uh, and I, it was a, we had a school library, which wasn't very library-like, I seem to remember. Um, no, I don't actually think it was quite a small room, but there were quite a few books. One of which was a junior version, I seem to remember, of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Um, and I think I borrowed it from the school library and probably didn't take it back. And I say that because I'm actually not sure where it is now. But I do remember as a young adult uh, still having this book and it had got the school stamp inside. Maybe they knew about it. I was a precocious child, darling. Oh, gosh, yes, I was. Um, years later, funnily enough, I was, I was at Wheeler's Lane Junior School and I went to, then I failed me 11 plus, which you had to do. It's an insidious, not a very good scheme for most people. Not for, it turns out I'm slightly dyslexic, but I didn't know that at the time. And uh, But then we went to a, another school, uh, Wheeler's Lane Secondary Modern Boys School, where, you know, we did quite well. It was not a bad school. You know, we learned different languages. We learned English, a bit of French, quite a lot of foul. Oh, yeah, I knew a lot of foul language. At the end of that, but then years later, I was working on a radio station. Yeah, I did. I've done it before, you know. Yeah, it's called BRMB, which is sort of like Capital Radio for the Midlands, uh, and it was owned by Capital Radio for a while. And there was a school writing competition. I used to do a Saturday morning kids show called Razzmatazz, which was great fun. And we had all the because there were only like five big commercial stations in the UK then. We had all the big star names coming up. I'll tell you my Michael Jackson story one day. Not now, but one day. Ask me, yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember there was a, a, my old English teacher, Mike Hewitt, who always took us by surprise because he actually was the first teacher we'd ever met who put his first name on the blackboard. You know what new teachers are like. When you get a new teacher, you know, it's, it's baptism of fire, isn't it, really? And Mike came in and he went, my name's Mike Hewitt. You can call me Mike or Mr. Hewitt. It's up to you. And we were like, what? He silenced us. But he was also a very good English teacher. Um, and years later... He, uh, there was a, one of the boys from my old school, one of the writing competition. So I had him on the kids' show Saturday morning. And he read this story, which I thought was rather good. And it turned out it was one I'd written. And it also turned out that Mr. Hewitt had kept all my English books. Um, I do remember, actually, homework was when, when he came up, um, when he became our teacher, he'd write on the board, write your homework for this week. He'd write on the board, there was a scream and a thump. A lot of people, a lot of the kids go, what? 
But I, oh, that got me going, that did. And in fact, I, I must have been one of the only times where mum and dad at home would go, stop doing your homework and go to bed. Um, anyway, that was that was my introduction to literature. And he kept all my books, which I thought was very sweet of him. Don't know where he is now. Run away screaming when he saw me again. But uh, so, you know, Christmas Carol and uh, school and uh, good teachers. I don't know how I got into teachers from that, but good teachers can make a massive difference. Uh, it obviously kept me, he sort of got me writing and he kept me as poor as I am now. Thanks, Mike Huey. Why didn't you make me become a programmer or go and work at a factory? Hmm? Yeah, all right. But Christmas Carol was with me for years and years and years. And uh, I actually started to write a version of A Christmas Carol back in 1997. Um, and it, uh, it was a play that I was doing. We started pub theatre in Birmingham, uh, the Billsley Pub, which is on an estate where I was born and brought up, um, in a pub called the Billsley. Uh, I wrote a play, um, and it ended up being called A Ghost of a Chance. Uh, but it started off me having a go at writing A Christmas Carol, which is why the two characters in it are Bob and his son. Uh, sorry, yeah, Bob, uh, Tim. Bob and Tim, as in Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim. Um, and I started to write I started to write A Christmas Carol, but my brother had been laid off and made redundant. It was the 90s. And then because his wife had got, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, because his wife had got a part-time job, they ended up being evicted from their house, him and his four kids, them and their four kids. And the house stood there for about two years doing nothing. And I was really quite outraged about this. So I ended up writing the story of Bob, not Bob Cratchit, but Bob, a bloke who is made redundant and has a bit of a difficult time. And anyway, I won't bore you with that now, but it went quite well. It actually won an award. Oh, yes, from the Royal National Theatre, my loves. Yeah, Guinness Award for Pub Theatre. And we got some money and um, there was a small boy in it, Justin, who was great, Justin Tower, And uh, a, a, a star name, uh, Paul Henry, who will be forever known to Midlanders as Benny in Crossroads, which was a massive soap back in its day. And directed by the incredibly clever John Adams, who not only started the Payne's Plough uh, writing theatre company years ago, they called it Payne's Plough after the pint they were drinking in the pub they were at. He's a good lad, is John Adams. Oh, yes. And he also then ran uh, Bolton, Octagon and Birmingham Rep and then uh, somewhere down south, whose name I forget now. But uh, he came and directed it. So it was a fantastic, uh, fantastic cooperation. Um, all started really by me borrowing that book of A Christmas Carol from Wheeler's Lane Junior School Library. So thank you, Wheeler's Lane Junior School Library. A copy of Ghost of a Chance is now in the British Library. So it, it kind of went on. So this version that we did, a one-person version, using Guy Masterson, who is, has been doing one-person shows for, for years, um, and he's quite a good actor as well. Um, I worked him quite hard, I have to say. He'd, he put out a, an email or a tweet before he started saying, no more drink now for December, because he's touring, oh, it was the end of November, actually, touring from the end of November until January. Uh, and I do work him quite hard for a one person. He, um, what does he say? He, he wrote a tweet saying that actually it's proven that a, an actor in a two-hour show will burn more calories than a, a, an office worker will over eight hours. Uh, and Christmas Carol, he, I, he, I, I did push him quite hard. He does quite a lot of dancing. He gets a little bit dump. Shall we say? I remember hugging him after he came off stage, for, and it's 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 an uh, an energetic show. Um, I have him dancing with his coat, but I don't give too much away. So yes, have a look at the Christmas Carol co uk, the Christmas Carol co uk, and you can see what dates uh, we're we're in London on the. Uh, well, I've got my book somewhere. Where is? We're actually coming into, but you won't. You might not be here. But if you're around, it's at the the fantastic place called the London Welsh Centre. When is that? Uh, oh yes, Monday the 12th of December so I shall probably pop along there and see it it's also at the Playground Theatre as well for a few dates um, uh, and like I say, all over the country so yeah, I'm feeling quite festive and I thought I'd start with this this is um, Rob Williams who has written music for all of the plays I've created over the last few years um, and this was his rough mix down so this is kind of what you'll hear if you do go to see my version with Guy Masterson of A Christmas Carol
Marley was dead. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial had been signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge was chief mourner, and Scrooge's name was good in the city for anything he chose to put his hand to. Marley was dead as a doornail, though coffin nail would be to me far more appropriate. And Scrooge knew he was dead, of course he did. How could it be otherwise? Scrooge and Marley were partners for I don't know how many years. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole assign, his sole residuary legatee, his sole friend, and sole mourner. And even though Scrooge was not so dreadfully cut up by the sad event, he was an excellent man of business on the very day of the funeral and solemnized it with an undoubted bargain. Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. There it stood years afterwards above the warehouse door, Scrooge and Marley. Sometimes people new to the business called Scrooge Scrooge and sometimes Marley, but he answered to both names. It was all the same to him. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covered as old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster, the cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his cheek, stiffened his gait, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue, and spoke out shrewdly in a grating voice. External heat or cold had little influence on him. No warmth could warm, nor wintry weather chill him. No wind that blew was bitterer than he. Once upon a time, of all the good days of the year on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. It was cold, bleak, biting weather, fog everywhere. The city clocks had only just gone three, but it was quite dark already. It had not been light all day, and candles were flaring in the windows of the neighbouring offices like ruddy smears upon the palpable brown air. The fog came pouring in at every chink and keyhole, and was so dense that although the court was of the narrowest, the houses opposite were mere phantoms. To see the dingy cloud come drooping down, obscuring everything, one might have thought that nature lived hard by and was brewing on a large scale. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open so that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who, in a dismal little cell, a sort of tank, was copying letters. Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was so very much smaller that it looked like one coal. But he couldn't replenish it, for Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room, and so as surely as the clerk came in with the shovel, the master predicted that it might be necessary for us to part. Wherefore the clerk put on his white comforter and tried to warm himself at the candle, in which effort, not being a man of strong imagination, he failed. A Merry Christmas, Uncle! God save you! Scrooge's nephew, who came upon him so quickly that this was the first intimation Scrooge had of his approach. Ah, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle? You don't mean that, I'm sure. Ah, but does he? You'll have to go and see the show to find out. <laughs> um, that was uh, Guy Masterson reading uh, my version of uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol uh, with music by Rob Williams, me long-time mate and uh, clever composer. Um, yes, and so if you do want to see, I say it's touring the UK at the moment, go to thechristmascarol.co.uk or just drop me a line, get in touch if you'd like to uh, say hello. And of course, don't forget anything that you're organising as well, then please let me know. Or if you've written a book or any sort of literary event, probably the best address is um, radio at Maverick Theatre. 
mavericktheatre.co.uk. Radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. And that gets you through to me. I am Nick Hennigan. This is Literary London on Resonance 104.4 FM. And uh, we're getting a bit festive because it's the sort of start of the festive period. And I do also love this next piece I'm going to play. It's fantastic. It's A Child's Christmas Poems and Tiger Eggs is the album. And this is lovely. It's by Keris Matthews, who, of course, knows Wales well. And having spent all my boyhood holidays, effectively, in mid-Wales, around Machunslith and Corris and Aberdiffy, then um, I also love Wales. And I love this. Get a load of this. Years and years and years ago, when I was a boy, when there were wolves in Wales, and birds the colour of red flannel petticoats whisked past the harp-shaped hills, when we sang and wallowed all night and day in caves that smelt like Sunday afternoons in damp front farmhouse parlours, and we chased with the jawbones of deacons, the English and the bears, before the motor car, before the wheel, before the duchess faced horse, when we rode the daft and happy hills bareback, it snowed and it snowed. But here a small boy says, It snowed last year too. I made a snowman, and my brother knocked it down, and I knocked my brother down, and then we had tea. But that was not the same snow, I say. Our snow was not only shaken from whitewash buckets down the sky, it came shawling out of the ground and swam and drifted out of the arms and hands and bodies of the trees. Snow grew overnight on the roofs of the houses like a pure and grandfather moss, minutely white ivied the walls and settled on the postman opening the gate. Like a dumb, numb thunderstorm of white torn Christmas cards. With a postman then too, with sprinkling eyes and wind cherried noses on spread frozen feet, they crunched up to the doors and mittened on them manfully. But all that the children could hear was a ringing of bells. You mean that the postman went rat a tat tat and the doors rang? 
I mean that the bells that the children could hear were inside them. I only hear thunder sometimes, never bells. There were church bells too. Inside them? No. No, no, in the bat, black, snow-white belfries, tugged by bishops and storks. And they rang their tidings over the bandaged town, over the frozen foam of the powder and ice cream hills, over the crackling sea. It seemed that all the churches boomed for joy under my window, and the weathercocks crew for Christmas on our fence. Get back to the postmen. They were just ordinary postmen, fond of walking and dogs and Christmas and the snow. They knocked on the doors with blue knuckles. Ours has got a black knocker. And then they stood on the white welcome mat in the little drifted porches and huffed and puffed, making ghosts with their breath and jogged from foot to foot like small boys wanted to go out. And then the presents after the Christmas box. And the cold postman with a rose on his button nose tingled down the tea tray slithered run of the chilly Clinton Hill. He went in his ice-bound boots like a man on fishmonger slabs. He wagged his bag like a frozen camel's hump. Dizzily turned the corner on one foot, and by God, he was gone. Ah, isn't that lovely? Years and years ago, featuring uh, Catred Finch. That was Keris Matthews and A Child's Christmas in Wales, extract from, by Dylan Thomas. Um, yeah, and in fact, you know what? There's another track from that. I'm going to play it right now. This is the Reverend Eli Jenkins' prayer from Under Milkwood. I shouldn't do the accent, should I? I can do. Oh, well, I'm an honorary Welshman. For I'm Welsh, you know good, my countryman. Mm. Henry V. William Shakespeare. Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. Oh, please do keep thy lovely eye on all poor creatures. Every evening at sundown I ask a blessing on the town For whether we last the night or no I'm sure it's always touch and go We are not holy, bad, nor good See what I mean? Isn't that lovely? 
the Reverend Eli Jenkins Prayer, performed there by Keris Matthews. Uh, I think it's an album called A Charles Christmas Poems and Tiger Eggs. And me doing a bit of Henry V Shakespeare for I'm Welsh, you know, good my countrymen. I haven't yet mentioned that Wales are no longer in the World Cup. Won't be a surprise because you'll have heard this. Yeah, After six, the first time in 64 years, Wales got to the World Cup finals. Um, and they're not in it anymore. They didn't win their group. They didn't come in the top two in their group. But I think they'd be very proud. And it was a bit of me really wishing I was back in Wales. We go to a place called Clanon. Oh, see, I've been that. I've been going there for that long, and even go <laughs> now. Yes, Clanon. Um, apparently, I, I, I say too much C. Clanon. Anyway, whatever. Clanon, which is sort of nearest. I suppose the nearest big town is uh, is Aberystwyth, which is also a lovely place. The pier there is great. And uh, friends of ours let us go and stay in a cottage there, uh, which was very, very important and useful when I started writing full time. And how should we say, I was a bit light on beer tokens. And we've continued to go there years later. Um, and I was thinking of the boys in the white swan up the road. <laughs> uh, yes, apart from when Wales went out. But even then, I think there would have been a, it would have been a good atmosphere. So uh, that's, we've kind of launched Christmas a little bit, haven't we? Hey. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Yes, indeed. So um, thank you for your company. Uh, don't forget if you've got anything you'd like me to cover or talk about, or if you've written something yourself, a book or a poem, or you're doing a literary event, or actually sort of any event really, then do let me know. Uh, I'm on bohemianbritain.com, which is a, a blog that I started sort of slightly tongue in cheek when this show, this Literary London podcast, was voted the number two bohemian uh, podcast to listen to in the world. Number one was in New York. Yeah, uh, So, slightly tongue in cheek. I thought, what makes a good Bohemian podcast? Do you have to be starving when you're making it? You know, do you have to record it in a little garret? Mind you, where I am at the moment, ain't much bigger, is it? No, it's not. So that's why I set up bohemianbritain.com and there's reviews and theatre shows and it's a bit of a mess, really. But have a look at that. And again, get in touch if there's anything you'd like me to, uh, to feature. And of course, here on Resonance 104.4 FM, which has just won a radio award. I can't remember the name of it, so I'll tell you next time. But uh, yes, we're quite pleased. Uh, Resonance FM has won uh, an, an award for being being good. <laughs> yeah. I, in spite of me. Yes, they have. So uh, that's it for this time. Uh, as I say, uh, radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk if you'd like to get in touch or if you've got a request or you want to say hello to anyone. Um, and I'll see you next time. All right, all right. Merry Christmas, ho, 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 ho. Hmm? Yeah. I'm Nick Hennigan. This is Literary London on Resonance 104.4 FM. <laughs>